All right, so in today's tutorial, we're going to be tackling this render, but we're going to be going a little bit more in depth with this. A lot of you have been requesting me do longer tutorials or just go more in depth. So this is what we're going to be doing today for this design. We're going to be covering photorealistic rendering. So how I make this look so clean and clear, the design theory. So why things are where they're at and what they make sense with the lighting, easy cloth. We got this right here. It's very simple. And a bunch of you guys on Instagram said you don't know how to do that. And it's very, very easy. And we'll be talking about the color scheme. Before we get into it, this is my Instagram where I posted this. If you want to see other stuff and request tutorials, you can go to my account. This is it. You can follow me, send me your work. If you do some of the renders from the tutorials, I love seeing those. So let's get into it. For this tutorial, we are going to be using Blender 2.8. So if you don't have that, just Google Blender daily builds and go and download it. And specifically, we're using Blender 2.8 because they have a much better cloth system and it makes it much better. So let's get into it. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is hit Shift A, click a plane, and hit S5, and that scales it up by 5. Okay, so first thing we're going to tackle is the B. Super simple, just Shift A, and we're going to go down, add a text, and we're going to hit Tab, Backspace on everything, get a capital B, and there we have it. Now on the alignment, go down here on the text on the alignment, on paragraph, you'll see that. Just go from left to center, and then we're gonna hit R, X, 90, and pop the B up, and we'll scale him just like that. Now we wanna give him some geometry. So right here on the tab where it says geometry, go hit extrude, and then right here on bevel, we're gonna give it some soft edges, and that will be on depth. So right about there does it pretty, pretty perfectly. Now let's go ahead and start adding those shapes. So we're gonna be tackling this area right here. So we're going to do this little circular area. First thing that's there is that box. That's just a simple cube I brought over here, scaled it down a little bit. And keep in mind when, I, when, when you're designing things like this, make sure they're tight. We want it to keep very tight in the design so everything stays in a central location. Now I'm going to click this right here on scale and then we're just going to scale him just like that. And I'm going to scale him down he was kind of right below this middle mark whenever I designed it originally. So right about there, and we'll put him here. Now let's add our torus. So shift A, go and add a torus. We're gonna hit R, X, 90. We're gonna be doing that a lot, just to flip it just like that. And we're gonna bring him over and have him sit on top of our box. And he was pretty much as tall as the B, so we're gonna make sure we get that. One tip, sometimes if you're trying to scroll in, you can't scroll in all the way. It's limiting you to do that. So if it's doing that, just hit the period key and it'll zoom it in. Then you can zoom all the way in just like that. Let's go in and add all these circles. No physics involved. I just basically placed them in and used just some dynamic composition just to sort of place them around and make it interesting. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to, I'll put it as a time lapse and just I'll show you me placing all those little guys. Here we have it. We have this just interesting area where all the balls are pressing against each other and things like that. All right, now I want to pause and talk about the design theory for this. So the B is for balance. That's why I picked that letter. Everything in this design is either defying the laws of balance on purpose to make it look interesting or they're balancing on each other like this ball here or these here. Just like these are kind of defying the laws of balance. Even this guy, he should be rolling off. He shouldn't be there, especially this right here. That should be tipping over. So it just makes it a more interesting composition when it comes to making you just look at it for much longer and making it cool. So that's why I picked the B and why I did the things that I did. I had the mindset of balance when I designed this. All right, now we're gonna work on this side. So first is a box. So I'm just gonna take this guy and duplicate him and I'm gonna stretch him just like that so we can get our box back. I believe it was just a regular box that I rotated. All right, now let's get these little tire looking things. They're really cool and they were fun to make and it's not with a torus, it is with a curve, a circle curve. So I'm going to RX90 on this circle curve. We're going to bring them over here, scale them down, and bring them up. Kind of like that. All right, now let's go over to the curve settings, over to geometry, go to extrude. So that's going to be how thick our tire is. And then go to the modifiers and add a solidify. Just like that. I'm going to take it off of shade flat. And we got our thickness just like that. So that's the outside. So that's the inside of our tire. 
and then we can just add a bevel here and we can just play around with the bevel settings right about there give it segments of five so now we have this smooth tire I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna scale it up and I'm gonna take our solidify thickness and bring it up then I'm gonna go to the scale here and bring it up a little bit so it overtakes it kinda of like the tire and now we have that nice little tire thing and now we can just take this I mean click it hold down shift click again duplicate these and then we'll just bring them up just like that and now we have those little tires I think they need to be smaller yep they both need to be scaled down so we can just select all of them by hitting B do that scale them down and perfect now I'm gonna hold down shift and click that and bring them over just to make it a little tighter and now we have those little tires cool all right now let's do the cloth I know quite a few of you are probably excited about that so let's go up so shift a let's add a plane scale it down and let's place it where we want it to be right there on our box and right there looks perfect all right now subdivide it by 30 and very important right under here where this is placed we want it to look like these are keeping the cloth on there so if we hit Z and go to wireframe view we can see the vertices right up here press face select and then that so we want to select some of the vertices that are under the tire those look good now make sure you s remain in edit mode go over to go over here to this little triangle and add a new vertex group and assign those vertices that we selected to this vertex group if you want to go back to wireframe view I want to go back to wireframe view to make sure they're still selected and click assign now we can go out of edit mode so now let's make it a cloth so make sure this is selected go over here to the physics tab and click select cloth and then now you've made it a cloth now if you just press play it just drops and that's because this needs to be a collision object and we need to activate that vertex group so in the cloth go down here to shape pin group click that and now you can see it working but again it's not reacting to this cube we need to make that a collision object so click on physics again click collision and that's all you got to do now there you go we got cloth problem is we need to add some more subdivision so we just add a subdivision surface and then when we press play bam we have some pretty nice cloth and you can up the sub subsurf and there you go you got some good cloth now we need to add our background so hit the hit our plane here shift D RX 90 and we'll bring it back just like that and then we'll take this duplicate it again scale it down and we'll make it our background and the reason why we're doing this is to bring emphasis to this area and we're gonna make it a very bright color as you can see I did here the objects are pretty dark but the background is very bright and that really brings your eye to this whole composition so that's why we're doing that here I'm just gonna to go to scale scale them down a little bit and looks perfect all right now let's get into lighting and it's a simple three-point lighting setup so one shooting here one from down and then one shooting this way now this is very soft lighting it's pretty good studio lighting and the best way to do that is with area lights pretty big area lights so we're gonna do that shift a go down to light and we're gonna add an area light I pretty much only use area lights I almost never use the sunlight or the point lights only time I use point lights if I'm doing a more abstract render and lighting just needs to go everywhere but for this stuff directional it need in my opinion should always be a point light they just look the best now if I hit render we already have some pretty good studio lighting it's nice and soft but everything's white so it looks brighter than it really is so we're gonna take our light shift D bring it over bring it this way if you hit R twice you can point it with your mouse just like that and I'm gonna scale them down a little bit and just rotate them around and I'm gonna hit shift D I'm gonna bring this guy over here and just like that and if we check the render now we have really really even lighting everything's washed out again no color going on right here now we're gonna deal with color so what did I do for the color scheme very simple there's a website called adobe.color.com and you have endless amounts of color palettes to choose from right now this is sort of that so this is last year's color that's sort of red but you can just type in a theme I'm gonna I'm gonna type in home 
now we have some really good color schemes. I don't exactly remember the one I picked, but we're gonna choose this one right here, and all you have to do is click on it, and it copies to your clipboard. So I clicked on the orange, and I want to make my background that orange color. Because I clicked on that color on the website, I'll click New, right here in the base color, click on Hex, and just paste in that color you picked, and bam, there it is. It pretty much copies that hex code right here, which is that code makes that color. So I want to make these I want to make this big background and the floor a very dark gray. So we're going to go in and add that, and we I want to make that pretty dark to bring emphasis to everything going on here. So just bring that, make that dark gray, and go in and select that material for that, and check the render. Boom, looks pretty good. Let's go in and add more colors. I want this cloth to be that yellow. Now let's get a navy blue right about here. This, this one right here, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to select this circle, and I'm going to go to the hex, paste it in, and if we check, boom, there it is. Now I'm going to teach y'all a really cool trick. If you select this one, hold down shift, select, 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 and then the last one you select is the one with the color. You can hit control L link, and that will be your materials, and boom, it all selects, it'll put the material of the last one you selected. So you can go in and just add the material like this, or you can hold down shift and just do all that. All right, last thing I'm going to do is add this transparent material, which is simply in the principled BSDF, you go in here, add a new principled, by default it adds that principled. All the here at the bottom, transmission, that's going to make it pretty much see-through or like glass. So bring the transmission up, I'm going to bring my roughness kind of down like that and I'm gonna select this one and add that material to it and we click render, boom. Now we have some really nice glass. All right, last thing I'm gonna talk about here is photorealistic rendering. I see a lot of you guys who send me your work, y'all ask me, how do you get your stuff to look so clear? One of the big things is my lighting. So if I hit Z and rendered, to me right now, this is too dark, I don't like it. So I'm just gonna go up to this top light here into the lighting, I'm gonna add strength of 300 on these two, I'm gonna give a strength of 200. Don't be afraid to blow out your scenes. That means, so that when it gets blown out, you know it's too bright and you can bring it down, but having a render that's too dark is just not good in any case. One of the things I think happens a lot is people's materials are too bright. For example, a lot of people like to use metallic materials. So I'm just gonna make this metallic, hit Z, rendered, and it's white and you don't, and it's white, which means, oh, I gotta bring my lights down. You don't have to do that. A lot, of thing, a lot of times, you just need to make your material darker. And now that it's darker, you can keep your light, you have those really nice highlights, and you still have a nice metallic material to play with. So for me, these two front ones, too bright, bring it back. Keep the above, keep the one above nice and bright. Keep these two in the front a little bit darker, and I'm gonna bring my roughness down on my glass here. And there you go, you have a really cool abstract design, very simple. I would even make things even tighter. I'd bring this in, bring things up, move it around. And this is the part where you can go in and be creative and do what you think looks better and just keeping things tight and nice. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'm gonna show you what the final render looks like. All right, last thing about photorealistic rendering, it's your sample count. Even if you have a bad computer, you just need to wait on the render. So for me, I think 200 samples is good for me and then also adding some denoising. So I just keep it at the default settings for this and then keep it at a render 200 samples. If you have a really bright render like this, then you can keep a lower sample rate. If it's a pretty dark render, then it's gonna be very very noisy, so you need to up your samples. So this is pretty good for me. I'm gonna go up here and render, render image. Okay, so this is the final render I did, very clean. It looks good, I'm really happy with it. Um, on this one, I added more bevel on this, especially these that added more bevel on the tires, and of course this is an orange. These are just slightly different colors. I didn't use the exact same palette, but again, I went back and added some darker stuff, fixed the lighting, moved the, li the lights around, and that's completely up to you. Obviously, there's some things missing like this. It's super simple to figure out. Just place around the circles, have some fun with that. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.